Hello and welcome. In this screencast, we will look at an example of calculating the arc length of a function on an interval. In our example, we will calculate one period of the function f of x equals sine of x. Let's start by drawing a graph of one period of the function and labeling some key information. We know that sine of 0 is equal to 0, and that the graph also crosses the x-axis at x equals pi and at x equals 2 pi. We also know that its y-values are between 1 and negative 1. On the left, we see our formula for the arc length of f of x on the interval from x equals a to x equals b. This formula comes from approximating our curved function with straight line segments, because we know how to find the length of a straight line using a distance formula. You can check your textbook to see how we can transform the length of a typical line segment into the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared delta x. Using the limit as the number of line segments approaches infinity results in this definite integral that calculates the exact arc length of f of x on the interval from x equals a to x equals b. Next, we need to determine our limits of integration. f of x equals sine of x is a periodic function, and the length of one period is 2 pi, then the graph will repeat every 2 pi units. So we're going to use a equals 0 as our lower limit of integration, and b is equal to 2 pi as our upper limit. You could also use different limits, like a equals pi and b equals 3 pi, as long as your interval is two units long so that we get exactly one period of our graph. Now we're ready to find our integrand. We see that the formula calls for the derivative of f of x. Our function is f of x equals sine of x, so we will differentiate this, resulting in f prime of x equals cosine of x. We now have all the information we need to calculate the arc length of our function. The arc length is equal to the integral with a lower limit of 0 and an upper limit of 2 pi. The integrand is the square root of 1 plus the square of our derivative cosine of x. So we have cosine squared of x, and then of course we have dx at the end because we're integrating with respect to x. This integrand, the square root of 1 plus cosine squared of x, doesn't look very complicated, but in fact, it doesn't have an elementary antiderivative. This means we won't be able to find an antiderivative and evaluate at the limits of integration and then subtract according to the first fundamental theorem of calculus. Instead, we can evaluate the integral using technology or approximate it with a trapezoidal sum or perhaps using Simpson's rule. You can pause the screencast now and evaluate the integral and then resume the screencast to check your result. Welcome back! When we evaluate this definite integral, our result is 7.64 units, which is the length of the graph one period of the graph of f of x equals sine of x. A straight line from x equals 0 to x equals 2 pi is about 6.28 units long, and our result is about 1.35 units larger, which seems reasonable when we look back at the graph, and it gives us confidence that our result of 7.64 units is correct. Thanks for watching.